Welcome to the Sino Traders Group. This is our weekend trading plan for March 13, 2010. Our website is blog.asinotraders.com where we put together effective video technical trading plans on a daily basis. That's right. We be firmly in trading plans to help us stay abreast of what's going on in the market. And as we look at our open positions and scan for new trades, it gives us focus and discipline and cuts down on our time so that we can spend time with our family. The week that was, well, we did end up uh, up for the week, uh, but you can see this is very small numbers up for the week. Some of this can be actually be done in a good market <laughs> in a day, but that was our whole week. So the market did continue to move up, but we're still not showing volume in the month of March. Um, there's been a lot of talk about that, about where, where people are. A lot of people say it's because we have nobody buying puts, but we still continue to have uh, light volume in the market. Uh, the NASDAQ did make a new 52-week high on Wednesday, and the S&P followed that up on Friday. Uh, not a closing high for the S&P high, but we had an intraday high on Friday. And 7 out of 10 sectors in, uh, advanced higher this week. Um, you know, again, no volume. We had no catalysts. Uh, we did have retail sales on Friday that came in um, uh, a, a little bit better than expected. It came in at a 0.3% when they were looking at a, a negative 2%. So... But again, we, we really didn't have any catalyst this week, and we talked about that last week. Um, the euro uh, did spike to its highest level against the dollar. So even with the dollar retracing, which is helping to support the market, um, we just didn't see the market move. We also had a weak market in a bond, and we had no earnings really to speak of. So what's going to happen next week that could move the market? Not that much, but we do have on Tuesday the FOMC, so it is certainly possible that on that report that they you know work obviously probably expecting the, the rate to stay where it is now if they were to raise it that would certainly cause some movement some panic possibly and also if they put out some language uh, on Tuesday that could also move the market one way or the other but as far as Monday we have uh, three economic reports uh, we don't have any earnings really to speak up on Monday or this week. We do have FedEx and GameStop, but nothing that's really going to move the market one way or the other. So the FMC uh, statement on Tuesday is really going to be the big mover of the week. So we're going to go straight to the charts um, as we visually look at the fact that March has been low in volume. Without volume, the market internal starts to lose value um, because we need to see what the sentiment of the traders are through the up volume and the down volume. And again, by looking at the lack of volume in the month of March, we lose a little bit of the value of the market internal. Um, so as we take a look at the Dow Jones here on a daily chart, you can see a couple of things. What we've been talking about for the month of March was, is this going to be a new swing high or a lower high from the January highs? And so uh, immediately we can see that we do have put in a new uh, swing low so that's great kind of doing in here so now we are retesting the January highs and that that is absolutely great um, what's important now is to see where we go from here uh, we're testing the January highs here on the Dow and um, you can see we broke the consolidation range here this week from that November December resistance and so now all we really have left is what's going on with the actual um, January highs. So if we aren't able to break this January highs, then what we do have is a lower high from the 2007-2008 highs. So it's real important for, for the bulls for us to continue to move higher. Um, and it's okay to come down back down to 2,500, which is that uh, resistance level. It's okay to come back down here and test that. Uh, because that still allows us to keep our swing lows uh, being higher. But again, we do still have the battle of the January highs. Now, when we switch over to the NASDAQ, on the NASDAQ, we get a whole different story. Here we do have the January highs right here. And what do we see? That we have broken above the January highs, which is totally great. Um, so the NASDAQ is once again leading us higher. Another thing we're seeing on the NASDAQ is, although the volume hasn't been super, but we are seeing that the volume is at least average as we're making this move higher. And also, as we see our push down, or almost, uh, was that a shooting star type pattern there, um, that the volume was down. 
Um, but again, you do have to be a little bit worried, especially if we get a gap down on Monday about what this is indicating. Um, but the good news is that we have broken the, uh, the January highs. And so we do have a great swing high now, uh, putting in higher lows, putting in higher highs. And that's certainly great f as far as the, the bulls are concerned. Let's switch over to the S&P 500. With the S&P, you can see we are sitting right here at the January highs, which is certainly great. Uh, again, the Dow and the S&P are not as strong as the NASDAQ, but at least we can see that we are at the January highs on S&P 500. So all that's good. The volume you can see is light, just like with the Dow. Not as bad, but still light. So again, we're looking for that catalyst that's going to move us higher. Let's switch over to the monthly charts. What is clear on the monthly chart, especially for the S&P 500, is the powerful resistance of the 50 moving average. Uh, we've been talking about this 50 moving average for months. And, you know, going back to November, couldn't get there. December, couldn't get there. You know, um, uh, we finally got there in December. January, we pulled back. I'm sorry, January, we got there. February, we pushed back. And now here we are in March, back sitting at the 50 moving average. So, again, as far as a psychological boost, we're, the story remains the same. Are we going to be able to uh, break the 50 moving average? And you can see how that lines up with some of our past uh, support and resistance levels. Again, if we break that, we're probably going to come up here to the 1235 level. But the 50 moving average has been a beast <laughs> for the S&P 500. Let's go to the Dow. With the Dow Jones, you can see that we have broken the 50 moving average just a little bit. But you can see this December, January resistance level. Uh, and look, again, look at that, and matching up with these other uh, past levels in the past years. Uh, so again, a psychological uh, boost that we will have if we can close above this 10,700 level on the Dow. Uh, finally, in the NASDAQ on the monthly chart, we can see uh, we've always been above the move 50 moving average for a couple months now. Uh, where we look at some resistance in here and that's exactly where we are swing highs from 06 and 07 swing lows there that's where we are so our next target is going to be about 2450 2475 i want to take a quick second and show you some sectors that are interesting and really uh, there's a lot and and there are a lot that are bullish which is good for the bullish sentiment on the market but uh, let's go ahead and take a look uh, first up here, we have agriculture. See, they made a very nice nice move uh, <clears throat> in a little resistance right now, but that's okay. Uh, next, we have energy uh, hovering nicely above the 50 moving average at a little resistance level, but certainly looks good. Uh, switching down to metals. Look at metals. Very nice. Little pull back to the 20 moving average. It's move, moving its way back up. Be nice to see if we test the during high. Same thing with steel. Uh, and industrial metals also looking very good skipping down to consumers now before we talked about consumer durables we talked about breaking the 50 mo uh, 20 moving average and look at this big push up to the um, 50 so we're either going to pull back or break up that could go either way financials what's cool about this is that we know with the s&p 500 if the financial moves the market will move and if we're going to make this break of the 20 moving average and run up and hit the 50 moving average that's going to be great for the market look at drugs biotech Aerial space, very nice. Uh, even manufacturing, very nice. Um, down to retail, very nice. So what you want to do when you see these things, transportation, uh, railroads, is you want to find stocks, companies within these sectors. Look at computers, um, very nice. And internet, also very nice. So a bunch of sectors that are looking very nice uh, the, to support this bullish sentiment, uh, but again, where will we go from here? What's going to be a catalyst to keep us moving higher? As we move to the education portion of our video, we're using the book Trading Your Way to Financial Freedom by Dr. Van Thorpe. And we've been talking the past couple times about the legend of the Holy Grail. That's where certain traders out there believe that there's a few people who know this secret to the market and that they make millions while the rest of us lose. And there is a holy grail, there is a secret to the market, but it's not what people think, and therefore they're looking in the wrong places. And we've talked about this in the past, especially as we were going through trade, Trading a Zone by Mark Douglas. We talked about what is the key to being a successful investor. But what he talks about here at the bottom here is that when you follow someone and you follow the crowd, you may make money in the long run if there's a long trend. If the market's going up for months 
and the person says go long, you'll probably make money. But as we consolidate like we have over the past couple of weeks here, that's when you'll struggle because true successful investors are able to think independently and adjust to market conditions versus following the crowd. We'll talk more about that. You guys know about our great futures trading room. And now that I put up here that we had some losses this week, we'll probably get more signups because <laughs> people will believe that it's real, that it's not always a thousand, two thousand dollars gains every day. And if you're going to trade futures, we've got a great futures broker for you. Uh, even any margin is low as three hundred dollars. Twenty free contracts if you sign it through us. You can demo the platform. We've got a great charting platform that we use it through all of these videos. So you can scan out and filter your stocks as you're. Um, looking for what to trade and a futures trading plan to help jumpstart your trading and futures. As always, guys, trade your own risk. You can lose your money, and I will see you next time.